So, all right, so uh, we're here at the best lab at the University of Illinois, and our primary duty here is uh, evaluating uh, ag ventilation fans. Um, so this is give you a third party unbiased resource for finding performance data. Um, and right behind me, you see a fan that's mounted on our chamber, uh, prepared for testing. This allows us, um, the two parameters we're really interested in when we test fan performance is airflow, uh, or volume of air moved, and uh, ventilating efficiency ratio, which is CFM per watt. You can kind of think of the CFM per watt as analogous to the miles per gallon on your car. So it's how, much, how far do you get or how much air do you get for one unit of energy that's going in. So um, you'll want to, that's very important to consider because many times that can be uh, over the lifetime of a fan, the amount of savings from a more efficient fan to a, a lesser efficient fan um, this, the electricity savings can more than make up for, say, the, the cost differences of a cheaper, less efficient fan. So you, you, need to, you need to really consider that as one of your uh, main parameters when you're um, designing and looking at fans. So um, another, th another thing to think about, um, we like to kind of say that fans, fans are pumps. They, they pump air instead of waters or other fluids. Um, and just like, uh, say, a water pump, some, some water pumps are designed, to, say, a deep well pump that might move a small volume, but at high pressure, uh, while other pumps are designed to, say, just transfer a large volume from, say, one tank to another um, where it doesn't take much pressure to move it. The, the same thing goes for fans. Uh, in the ag world, You've got uh, livestock ventil ventilation fans that work against very um, low pressures, um, whereas then on the other end of the spectrum, you might have like grain drying fans, which have to force air up through, um, you know, shelled corn, and so it takes a lot of a lot of uh, energy and pressure to get through that. So you, you'd want a different you'd want a different fan for each of those applications. So. Secondarily to those airflow and efficiency, you want to you want to know how. We're here in the the best lab at the University of Illinois, uh, in the ag and bioengineering department. We uh, primarily are interested in doing fan performance tests in this lab. Um, you can see behind me. This would be an example of a large summer ventilation fan. Um, the the primary characteristics when you're looking at at uh, evaluating fans are its airflow, and uh, which is measured in cubic feet per minute, or CFM. And then secondarily, we also are, are interested in uh, ventilation efficiency ratio, which is CFM per watt. Um, and you really are, need to take that into account because that can be a big, a big issue in the cost of, of uh, the total cost of your fan, not just the upfront cost. Uh, over the life of a fan, a more efficient fan can often um, save and you know cost less over its life, including the electricity usage, than a less expensive fan that doesn't operate so efficiently. Um, so, um, and when we're looking at fans, the the other thing you want to look at is how does it operate against different pressures. So a fan is uh, basically a pump, a pump of air. And just as we, a fluid pump would pump have different characteristics, you often might have, say, a deep well pump that has to work against very high pressures, doesn't move a large volume, but works against high pressures. Uh, and you compare that to, say, a transfer pump that uh, you want to move you know, high volumes quickly from, say, a tank to a, another tank or a pond, um, you wouldn't use the same pump because they have different characteristics and uh, the same as with fans. With a livestock building, you're going to operate at very low pressures. You want to move a lot of air. Um, whereas another application such as grain drying fans, it's a much higher pressure uh, operation where you're having to force the air through the shelled corn 
and um, so you don't use the same type of fan. You want to use a, a, a propeller fan anyway, one that doesn't take much electricity to move a lot of volume of air for a ventilation, whereas a grain drying, um, it wouldn't have the capability to move it through the grain at the, the characteristics that it has. So, um, so those are important things to think about when you're, when you're designing. Um, other things that we don't basically test here in the lab but you should consider is uh, maintenance of your fans which might mean cleaning, cleaning of shutters and the housing. Um, studies have shown depending on the level of dirt uh, losses of flow and efficiency of 10 to 30 percent in, in research projects. Um, so it, it's hard to see that loss when you're just looking at it with your eyes. So, you know, that's something you need to keep in mind as far as maintaining your um, facilities. Another thing that you'll also want to maintain is uh, if they are belt driven fans, uh, check for wear on that, that you're not losing RPM. Um, and so you're not, you know, your, your fans performance would be downgraded if, if you're losing, if you're worn drive belts and so forth so um, yeah that's kind of a how can you tell if a fan belt if a belt needs replacing um, or do you just do it on a regular basis like a car I mean ideally if you could have a, a, a tachometer to measure RPM then you could you could see that when your uh, RPM start dropping um, not everybody has a tachometer so you can um, look at them and look for wear compared to uh, you will see they'll physically be smaller in their width once they wear down in the V, v groove um, so that's that's something to to look at as well is it costing you what's the ramification of having a worn belt? so worn belt you won't be moving the air uh, your building won't be operating as it's designed you won't be moving as much air um, that might mean that you can't keep the barn cool as and you're it's going to stress the animals um, if you're not moving enough air and during the summertime if it's uh, typically we're talking summer ventilation when we're talking belt drive fans so um, minimum most of the minimum ventilation for winter is going to be direct drive and you that's not an issue in that case so. can you just say if your fan belt starts to wear i just need those words if your fan belt starts to wear. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I it's really planning things like 10 steps ahead. And yeah. It's hard to see the creative wheels. Um, right. And what are the ramifications of a dirty fan? So again, um, this will cost you both airflow as in a, a fan running slow with a worn belt, but it also will decrease your efficiency because your fan is having to work just as hard or harder than if the, if it were clean. So oh, I'm sorry, could you start that with, uh, to include the, so people know what you're talking about, um, if your fan is dirty, so, a so, dirty fan or something. Yeah, so, so if you have a dirty fan, um, this can uh, cut down on the airflow, in other words, and also the cooling. Um, efficiency of a summer fan um, and in both summer and winter fans if it's dirty it will also cut down on um, how efficiently your fan moves air because um, it will start to per unit of air you're going to have to be putting more energy in. That was great. So. What about bearings? Belt drive fans you should also um, you know maintain bearings as well. Um, typically that's the kind of thing where you it'll probably know because of sounds that you're having problems with bearings. Um, so, But replacement and some of them need to be greased if they're not if they're not uh, a sealed bearing sometimes they're uh, a, a greasable bearing so they should be maintained on a regular basis. Okay. Okay, in, uh, in order to make a good fan selection, you need to look at uh, performance tests that's tested in the lab. Um, because fans, you, just by looking at them, you can't evaluate how well they're operating. 
Um, so when you design a building, you will probably have a total volume of airflow that you need to move um, for summer and winter ventilation. Um, so by having the numbers, you can, you, can, you can know how many fans you need and that you're meeting that requirement. And then um, you should definitely, for your efficiency and looking at electric costs, you should definitely evaluate the CFM per watt of the different fans you're uh, comparing to see. Um, and, and basically what your budget allow, generally we recommend get the highest, highest level that, you, that your budget will allow. So, so when selecting a new fan, um, you'll want to look at performance figures uh, measure, measured from a lab. Um, to get a third party and, and to assure they're all tested in the same manner, uh, we have a website that, that uh, lists fan performance. Um, all that we've spoken about as far as airflow, CFM per watt, and you can look at a full pressure range of these fans as well. Um, and I don't know where I'm going from there. But. So when evaluating performance of a fan, uh, you want to look at, at, at fan test results from, from a lab that they're all tested the same way. Here at our lab, we have a website so that you can um, see online what is available commercially, look at the airflow rates, the CFM per watt, um, and, and get good hard test data um, on, on results. And get good hard test data on results. Just say that again. And get good hard test data and results. Good hard test data on results? Was it on? Oh, and yeah. it was and, wasn't it? Oops, I said the wrong thing. Good hard test data and results. Or just do the end of that sentence again, because it just it kind of went at the end. Yeah. Um, okay. So you want me to start at the beginning, kind of? You don't really have to, but you could. Okay. Yeah. All right, now I'm rolling. We're at the best lab at the University of Illinois, um, and we're in the fan testing business here. Behind me, we have uh, one fan on our chamber. Um, so primarily, the the main focus here is we're looking at two parameters, and that is airflow, which is measured in cubic feet per minute or CFM, and then also. Uh, ventilation efficiency ratio, which is CFM per watt. You can think of CFM per watt kind of like miles per gallon on your car. So it's, um, you know, how much do you get out for what you put in? So um, the, the other thing you would want to consider for these two measurements is, uh, is how does the fan operate at different pressures? Um, just like with a water pump or any kind of fluid pump, basically a fan is just an air pump. So just like with a water pump, you have different characteristics. You have, uh, say, a deep well pump where you're um, pumping against very high pressures to lift the water, but it's probably a small volume. Um, with, you might compare that to, say, a transfer pump where you're pumping a large volume um, from one tank to another, but you don't have to lift it very high, so it doesn't take uh, the kind of pressure to move that, to move that, and you're moving a large volume um, with a moderate amount of horsepower to do that. Um, we see the same thing with fans, uh, and in, in agriculture, maybe two applications that would be similar as a livestock ventilation fan, such as the one behind us that works at very low pressures, but moves a very high volume of air um, and compare that to a grain drying fan which um, moves a moderate amount of air against a very high pressure since you're you're moving air through shelled corn and the small voids um, so if you tried you, you want to apply the right pressure capability fan to your application if you tried to use a ventilation ag ventilate a livestock building ventilation fan on grain you, you wouldn't move any air because it couldn't do the pressure um, 
the grain drying fan on a, a livestock building, it, it could move air, um, but you'd probably use almost 10 times as much power to do it. So you want to be smart in how you apply your, your fans. And uh, so that's why, that's why you go to test reports and look at the, the hard data on uh, how a fan performs. How much does it move? When a building designer designs a building, they'll, they'll have a fixed number that they know they need to move of air in the summertime. Um, and so when they look at these reports, then they can evaluate how many fans will we need to put in the barn and be assured that that's, uh, those fans will operate the way they need to operate. Um, and then secondly, you, you do want to look at your CFM per watt because that you know, has a big effect and uh, it can far outweigh the upfront costs of the fan over the life of a fan, which is likely to be you know, at least 10 years. Um, you think electricity use over all that time, the more efficient fan can, um, typically if there is a difference in cost between higher and lower efficiency, the more efficient fan can make up that cost typically in its lifetime. So you wanna get as efficient a fan as you can uh, to make your dollars go, go the farthest, so. Back in. Yeah. Um, okay. So, when you are evaluating these numbers that we've talked about, we have a tool that we've developed uh, here at the university and a website that, uh, that the companies, after they've tested their products, they can release them to be published. Um, and it's ideal because you know that they've all been tested in the same manner. Uh, so that uh, you're comparing apples to apples. Um, this uh, site will give you um, the airflow and CFM and then CFM per watt. And you can click on the complete reports to get the full static pressures that they've been tested at as well. So, at a very minimal static pressure, you um, actually can design a fan to get quite high CFM per watt. And so if you are certain that you won't, you won't ever see these any higher static pressures, it, it can be okay to have, um, you know, that, that only operates at low static pressure. The problem is there's always unforese unforeseen things out in the field. Um, you want you want adequate static pressure because even if your building isn't designed to operate at a very high static, there there might be situations where you have a a, a headwind coming into the fans that is maybe like all day long and it's um, consistent. You want to have a little uh, a little boost, you know, a little. A little margin for error with your fans so that they can overcome that and not it, it may still lower their airflow somewhat but not just totally knock them down to almost nothing so that's good yeah, yeah that's just helpful. in case we need something yeah thanks anytime okay so definitely when you're looking at the cost of a fan that's not the only thing to consider um, you should consider your costs on the whole life of the fan. And by that I mean um, your electricity cost as well. Because if you look at the CFM per watt uh, of a fan, um, one that is a higher CFM per watt may cost a little more up front, but in one or two seasons you may have enough electricity savings to actually make up that difference in cost of the fan. And then the rest of the lifetime you could actually come out ahead by having the more expensive fan and just saving savings on electricity. Um, so you need to definitely consider CFM per watt and how efficient the fan can operate. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Not really, that happens all the time. <laughs> okay, so do you, let's see. I'm thinking let's just look at the, the main page first. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just get back to the... Okay. 
So our uh, ventilation fans are listed here on our website. Uh, it's best.illinois.edu. Um, click through to get to the ventilation fans. Um, there are a few tabs to get there. And we also have um, a full listing of all the different manufacturers here. So you can look up fans. Um, you can specify what your farm's voltage and power setup is so that you get the right fan tests, all the different manufacturers. If you have a specific dealers in your area you want to look up, you can just look at, say, one manufacturer's um, different fans or you can choose by size of fan, by diameter, airflow if you know the range of airflows you want to look up in a fan, and um, by certain, certain CFM per watts. Or you can just go by the default and everything. Uh, you do need to select which power you're in, but other than that, you can just default and pretty much show everything that we've tested. Um, so if you go here, this is kind of just a summary, the database summary page, um, which doesn't have a full range of static pressures. It has common static pressures that a building will operate in, but depending how your building's designed, it could be slightly different from this. And um, uh, so if you need to see a complete test report, you can uh, click on the link here which will pull up a PDF of the full test result. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention about this page is we have over here what's called the airflow ratio. We talked a little bit about static pressure and how a fan may perform over a range of static pressures. Um, some fans will hold up better as the pressure, the static pressure against the fan increases. So a higher airflow ratio is ideal because that means the fan is more stable over uh, a range of pressures. But again, we can pull up, we'll look at a few, a full test. This is an example of a full test report here. It just has a description so that you can be sure it's the right fan you're looking at. Could you explain how you get there from the previous page? Yeah, so basically, oops. So basically just the first column, uh, this is a test number that, that's for our files that you link on. Um, so if you're wanting this ACME model, BDR48J2C, you, link, you click on that link, it'll pull it up. Like I said, a description page just to make sure that you're looking at the right fan. And then a uh, basic test report with static pressures from typically from 0 to 0 0.3. Sometimes if a fan isn't capable of the high pressure, it'll be a few less points like 0 to 0.25. Um, and then for each of these, it'll provide airflow and in CFM and efficiency in CFM per watt. Can I switch your battery soon? I don't know how long you wait. 8%. Some of the large summer ventilation fans um, in the past, all of the large fans have been belt-driven fans. Um, in this case, this is also a belt-driven fan here. Um, but what we're starting to see is that with some of the new technologies that's available, that rather than just operating at a one fixed speed, turning on and off, that even some of the large summer ventilation fans, which in the past um, had only been single-speed fans now, can be uh, operated as variable speed fans. Um, so the idea there is that um, you always operate the fan in, in one of its most efficient operating ranges so that its CFM per watt is very high. Um, 
this is done with different types of uh, drivers coupled with motors. Um, some of them are the more the high value uh, operations on farms are starting to be used and I, I suspect going forward that we'll start to see more and more of these. Um, but at this time it's typically used on uh, farms that uh, maybe breeding stock or more high value stock rather than just across the board. But um, So those are some of the new kind of technologies that you might might keep in the back of your mind and consider um, ways to just use just the energy you need to use with the variable speed. I think that's um, my... Uh, uh, okay. So to summarize the some of what you need to look for when you're evaluating fan performance uh, Make sure that you've, you're getting actual test data uh, from a lab and uh, you'll want to look at airflow and that's in CFM, uh, efficiency in CFM per watt and you'll want to know across um, how does the fan operate over static pressure. You may want to look at what's called the airflow ratio in our summary on the first page. This should be as, as close to one as possible. Indicates a fan that holds up to higher static pressures better. Um, when you're looking at maintenance, some of the main issues that you'll want to do is, is periodically clean your fans, which is typically going to be your guard, the housing surrounding the fan, and particularly important is the, the uh, shutters or backflow dampers as these added dirt weight will make them harder to open and cause and take extra electri electricity to open. Um, extra cost for, the, for you, the end user. Um, maintenance, general maintenance, you need to of your belt drive fans, make sure that the belts are not excessively worn. You can tell this by looking at their cross section if they get too narrow, um, checking bearings, replacing noisy bearings. Um, if the bearings are greasable, make sure they periodically are lubricating them. And uh, those, those can maintain your system so it's operating correctly. Um, and not having to operate for excessive time if it's not moving the air that it requires. Could you talk about the shutters again? So as far as cleaning or just, just oh, a general yeah, cleaning, background on? It's important to clean the shutters because the weight will... Okay. The shutters are particularly important to keep clean uh, because the weight of the dust makes it harder for the, the fan work harder, opening uh, the shutters, which in turn means your fan will operate longer and uh, use more electricity to move the, the needed air. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that's uh, it's very important to make sure you're uh, keeping clean. And do, how do people do that? Do you just take a hose and spray them down? A hose, pressure washer, probably don't want to get a, if, Pressure washer, if you stay back a little ways, you don't want to damage anything. Do you mind just saying it, um, uh, how people clean these by using a... Typically, okay, yeah, typically these are cleaned with, uh, with water, hose, spray hose. Typically, uh, low pressure is fine, but if you pressure washer, as long as you're not um, too close to the unit, that should be fine as well. Great, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, for maintenance on a fan, some of the things you want to look at um, is cleaning. This is, of course, a new fan in a lab. So typically, though, where you're going to find buildup is in the guard. Um, that's pretty easy to clean. The other one would be the shutter and the louvers. That's pretty important because uh, 
they open by gravity, so any dirt adds weight to them. And uh, also dirt in the pivot points on them make it harder for them to pivot. Um, so that would be at each end of the louver. So just, just wash that off um, with water periodically. Um, the other thing you need to look for wear would be its, its drive belt. And uh, typically, visually, once those wear, you can start to see they get narrower. Um, bearings, uh, this one, the motor's basically internal, so you're not going to have to do anything with that. This one has a bearing right here. It's, it's a, this is a sealed bearing. Um, so there's nothing for you to maintain on that other than replacing uh, if it starts to get noisy or um, some fans are designed with pillow block, what's called pillow block bearings that are uh, can be greased and maintained and in those cases if it has a place to grease them you should grease them periodically. How would you recommend cleaning it? Um, Pressure washer is fine, uh, although it's, you probably just, the motors are going to be uh, sealed, but you may want to like not directly uh, put, get too close to the motor so the pressure isn't huge on the, on the motors, but other than the motor, pressure washer works well. Okay, so the shutter, right there. Okay, that's what I need. Now go ahead with the other thing. Sorry, I just wanted to do it while I was thinking about it. Okay. So the the shutter is needed in uh, summer ventilation fans because um, if you fi cycle fans on and off, the fans that aren't on, you don't want to draw air in um, from the opening that is uh, that 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 fan creates and it also will close in colder weather so that you don't pull air in through the opening. Um, but since they open by gravity and or airflow and close by gravity, um, if they get too much dirt on them that adds a lot of weight, that adds to the pressure that the fan has to work against to open it and uh, in other words, she, it, will likely not move air as efficiently and uh, so you're using extra electricity with a dirty fan. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. These are for beginning farmers and ranchers so we keep trying to mm -hmm. go back to the basic basic level. Why does, why does this even work? So this is your fan chesting chamber? Yeah. Do you Run, you have uh, instrument uh, devices that you take measurements with, and mm -hmm. so like the gauges, those water filled gauges above, those are a pressure. Uh, to the left of the computer is what we measure electricity with, um, and that's pretty much it. The, the pressures we measure the airflow. Um, by um, measuring pressures over a known opening inside the chamber. 